Lesson 2.4, simplifying cube roots. So we went from square roots to now cube roots. What is a cube root? Well, it's a radical that has an index of three. So you'll see this little number here. What that means is it almost takes, not almost, but it takes three of the same thing getting multiplied to be able to like split it into one of them. Okay, so let's, let's look at a visual example. Perfect cube numbers are numbers that can be arranged into a literal cube. In other words, the product of that number contains three duplicate factors. So a number times itself times itself. First smallest cube we can make is one. And since we're in three dimensional objects now of cubes, this is dealing with volume. And the way to find volume is length times width times height. So it's like this is a one height, one width, <laughs> maybe that's length, one. You get what I'm saying. One times one times one is one. So one is the first one. Then we have a two by two by two wide. Two times two is four times two is there's eight cubes there. And then if we increase and have three by three by three, three times three is nine times three is 27. So hopefully that gives you um, some kind of visual. Let's list the perfect cubes in order. These are also on my back wall in the bottom row, so I'm going to use those to help me because I don't have the super big ones memorized yet. Well, we started with one, then we said eight, then we said 27. Next one would be four times four is 16, times four is 64. Next one would be five times five is 25. 25 times five is 125. I would at least memorize these. These get used almost all the time, really more than the rest of the list. Six times six is 36 times six. I'm cheating and looking back there is 216. Seven cubed, seven times itself, three times is 343. Eight cubed is 512. Nine cubed, 729. 10 cubed is 1,000. You can keep going, but that should be sufficient. So of course, if we got perfect cubes, we got non-perfect cubes. That's a number that cannot be arranged into a cube, only a rectangular prism, some kind of box, like a Kleenex box, you know, the longer skinnier ones. In other words, a number that has no three duplicate factors. So six, well, six divides by three, but that's not what we're going for. Think of the ways to make six. It could be two times three times one. That's what this guy would be, no. Six times one times one. Oh, one, sorry. No, so that doesn't work. 12, think of how you multiply to make 12. Two times three is six, times two is 12. See, now all the same number. You could do one times six, which is six times two is 12. No, there's going to be no way to arrange it into a cube. So our job is to break these down using numbers from our list of perfect cubes up here, okay? Cube root of 32. So start here. Can't be 64. Can't be bigger than itself. It's 27. No. 8. Yes. So I'm going to break this down into the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 8 times what makes 32? 4. Cube root of 8 is 2. So this would be 2 with a cube root of 4 left over. Make sure you're writing the correct index. Okay, number two, cube root of 135. Start at the top of your list, 125, no. 64 doubled would be 128, no. 27, maybe. Yep, 27 and five. So split this into two cubes. Cube root of 27, cube root five. If you're not sure what the cube root of 27 is, you have two options. Hit math, and then if you go down to option number four, or if you hit a four, it'll, it'll select that option. See how that little three is in front of the radical? That is a cube root symbol. And then you could put 27 in, and it tells me it's three. Or hit three first, math, go to option five, which has an X in front of a radical, that is when you want to use any number index. So when we get to fourth roots and fifth roots and so on, then you can use that um, technique. And so I could put in 27 and it tells me it's three. So this is really a three and I would have cube root 
of five left over. Okay, number three, I've got cube root of 108. Start from the top. Uh, 64, we already said doubled would be 128, so that's too big. 27, I think. Again, so I said you'll use the same ones over and over and over again. Yep, four and 27. So we got cube root of 27 times cube root of four. Cube root 27, we already knew was a three, just a normal three, and then I would have cube root of four left over. Okay, and you pause and try number four. Your answer should be four cube roots of two because our perfect cube in 128 is 64. Cube root of 64 is four. <clears throat> I said that word, four. <laughs> okay, now simplifying cube roots with variables. Well, if with a square root, we wanted something squared to cancel. Now, if I were to have something being cubed, a cube root and a cube cancel each other out and it would just be X. So you're looking for sets of three since that's our index. So on this one, since it's six, all I have to do is take six divided by the index of three, which would make x squared. So it's nice when they're multiples of three. Number six, since I have x to the 21st power, 21 does divide by three as well, and that would be x to the seventh. You're taking seven sets of three x's out, if you can visualize that. <clears throat> but if it's not a multiple of three, we gotta break this guy down into two different cube roots We'll put the perfect ones here and the leftovers here. Five is almost six, but we can't add to it to change it. Let's go down to x cubed, right? That would be three of the five, and then I would have x squared left over. These would make x to the fifth total. I'm just rewriting it. And then this would cancel to make x cube root of x squared. Number eight, if you wanna pause it and try it, you can. 14 is almost 15, but we can't add to it. Let's go down to the next multiple of three, which would be 12. So we'll break this into cube root of x to the 12th times cube root of x squared. 12 divided by three is four. And then I have left over cube root of x squared. Next, we're just putting it all together in these algebraic cube roots. This would be cube root of 27 is a perfect cube. X to the sixth will be a perfect cube. Y squared is not since it's not a multiple of three. Cube root of 27 is three. Six divided by three is X squared with a cube root of Y squared left over. Number 10, cube root of 54. Um, 27 times two, I believe is 54. X to the seventh, let's round down to X to the sixth with a leftover X. Y the ninth is a multiple of three, so it'll stay. Key root of 27 is three. Six divided by three is two. Nine divided by three is three. With the leftover cube root of two X. And 11's a little, more of a challenge, but still not bad. <clears throat> 375, it's not on our list, but I'm liking 125. 375 divided by 125 is three. Yeah, I could have done that in my head, but I'm being lazy. We got cube root of 125 times a cube root of three x to the eighth round down to x to the sixth we would have x squared left over y the tenth would round down to y the ninth with a leftover y cube root of 125 is five six divided by three is two nine divided by three is three times the cube root of three x squared y and then don't forget about times eight x squared y cubed which would become eight times five 40, two plus two, x to the fourth, three plus three, y to the sixth, times cube root of three x squared y. Ooh. And that is lesson 2.4.